this is Rebecca Rambo from the compliance team and I'm here from the rehab director meeting in Jackson, Mississippi with some of our rehab directors to talk about our group and concurrent strategy. So can you go ahead and give us an idea of uh, what facility you're at and what you are using as a rehab director to help your staff with group and concurrent? Okay. I'm Ryle Reagan uh, with Westbrook Guest House. Uh, initially when we started implementing group and concurrent, uh, one of the big things was trying to get buy-in from the team. And through the research on safe transitions, there were a lot of uh, tools and resources in there uh, for health literacy uh, to educate the patients on their disease process and also safe transitions and preparing them to go home. We were sending a lot of people back home into the community. And uh, so we used uh, those resources uh, to gain a real good idea of what they're going to be doing when they go home. Um, the information was very impactful, very, very organized, and was easy uh, for the therapist to then translate into a group and, and educate those patients. Um, so what we did was printed all of those out and made folders and put them on the desktop to where they could easily go in, grab a, a packet, and be able to do their, their group with that. Along with uh, function, uh, we were having people, whenever they, we did the teach back, uh, they would have to stand and speak uh, and different things like that to be able to incorporate it into function. So the health literacy packages were really, really good for us to be able to educate our patients and also to translate that into to action whenever they return home. That's great. So we also have another rehab director here and he is building has a, a problem that a lot of other buildings also do. They face the struggle with planning group and concurrent while having a lower average daily census of maybe two or three patients. So Tommy, do you want to go ahead and talk about how you've been successful with group and concurrent even with a small caseload? Our average part A census uh, is usually two to three part A's on uh, any given day. Our max is usually about five. Uh, what we've done is uh, we're trying to pair up our part A's with some part B's with a similar diagnosis um, or similar case mix. Um, we love getting our folks in on fall prevention and trying to work on functional groups as far as uh, working on transfer safety, uh, sit to stand type groups, uh, really trying to hone in on fall prevention, uh, especially as it relates to how they're transferring in and out of their bedroom uh, and trying to prepare the patient for returning home as safe as possible. Um, we work very close to, closely together, uh, myself and the occupational health department, uh, trying to share with some of the patients and then also uh, mixing back and forth, making sure that we're not overlapping one another and then uh, also making sure that we're kind of working together as a team so that if I've got somebody the OT needs, uh, I always check with them and make sure, hey, you need this person before I take them back. So that's great. So lots of inner communication among your team and, and using each other as resources. So, well, thanks for tuning in on our group and concurrent session for the day, and we will see you guys next time.